Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I am Rolando Carrasco. I am here for, uh, with Akshay from Oracle. And we are going to talk about how to build a cloud native image recognition solution using Oracle uh, cloud infrastructure and services. I am from uh, Mexico, and this is my first time presenting in KubeCon. What about you, Akshay? Me too. First time at KubeCon. Very excited to be talking to you all. Okay, so let's get started with our own introductions. I'm going to do it first, and then Aksha is doing himself. So I am from Mexico, as I already mentioned. I started my own company like 20, like 10 years ago, sorry. It is the name SPS. I used to work for Oracle about 20, 2002 or something. And then uh, 2010, I just quit and started my own company. I've been working with Oracle for several years, you know, Oracle technology, I mean. And that is why I, I've been uh, joining couple of advocacy programs, Oracle uh, Groundbreaker program and Oracle Ace Director. And my background is uh, with distributed systems. That's what I've been doing for a while, uh, since the old days of enterprise um, architecture integration and web services as a way. And now with these microservices, cloud native architectures and principles. Uh, my contacts are there with Twitter. My Twitter handler is in the slide, also my LinkedIn. Um, so you can contact me with those um, through those channels. So I think actually you can move forward. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be talking to you all with Rolanda today. Um, I am uh, the principal director for Oracle Cloud Native DevOps and Observability. Um, I have about 12 years of experience, first with on-prem technologies and later with cloud infrastructure across various organizations, uh, Dell, Amazon Web Services, NetApp, and startups after that. So um, very excited to be talking to you all. If you want to reach out to me, my uh, social handles are provided here. So let's talk a little bit about the story itself, right? Um, so this is a presentation uh, that has a lot of practical implications. Um, the impl uh, seeing that we are uh, in KubeCon, this story is about using cloud native principles for this particular very practical problem. And we wanna share that experience with you, how we created these APIs on top of cloud native technology. Now the use case itself uh, is about uh, the use of scanned documents, IDs, contracts, and so on. So traditionally, uh, there are a lot of organizations, think about loan processing, think about bank, uh, uh, banks and those kinds of industries. Uh, anything that requires the processing of documents is usually employed, um, usually employs you know, people to manually look through those documents, populate those fields, maybe things like name, your bank account number, you know, other uh, identification data manually. And as people do it manually, it can be slow, and not to mention it can also be error prone and it could honestly be a waste of human resources. Uh, people are you know, made to do much uh, more complicated tasks. So that's the problem we want to solve uh, using cloud native and AI technology. Um, so the context for this is that, uh, you know, you could have multiple channels in which these documents are provided, right? Maybe they're provided directly. Uh, maybe they're provided to a bank teller in person by the customer. Maybe they're provided by web or mobile. Somebody just, you know, uses the website um, or their mobile app to send the documents over. Could be sent by email as well. And there are many other ways, right? Um, and all of these documents usually have to sometimes be validated against some kind of enterprise system. A financial institution like a loan processing company might want to validate, validate the account number of the person, uh, the name, the address, and so on. They also might need to be validated against some kind of uh, government registry. Maybe like if you provide an ID, you want to make sure that that ID is genuine. It's not a false ID. At the end of the day, uh, you know, SPS undertook a project with a customer using Oracle technologies uh, to solve this particular problem. The problem was around automotive loans and credits. And the loan approval is actually done uh, only after a number of checks, like credit check, ID check for fake IDs, and so on. And there are 
15 types of documents you know, that need to be reviewed across addresses, loan payments, credit scores, and many other things, right? And you wanna do it in a cloud native fashion. Now, Rolando is gonna tell us a bit more. We work with this customer who has a specific uh, challenges and they were looking to streamline the, the, the time that they take to approve or to reject a loan credit, all right, or a loan or a credit um, for um, uh, automobiles. So th they were reviewing already these images and these documents, but sometimes they they had already a scan, but the, um, the quality of the document was not good. For example, sometimes they they uh, their documents were scanned in TIFF format, so it was very low resolution. Also. Another thing that they had, or another problem that they had, is that sometimes the um, the image was not in the correct position. Okay, so they needed to rotate it in order to get the information. And sometimes, while they were doing the rotation, some of the elements were were uh, were lost. So this process it is very relevant for them because they use they actually use the documents in order to approve or to or to reject the loan evaluation, all right? So they use those documents to get very specific and valuable information for them in order to say, okay, this is a good person in terms of their score and whatever he's showing to us, and we are going to approve or reject the loan, okay? So um, this was kind of the scenario, tons of information, documents, and so on. And with that, trying to um, approve or reject. Okay, so our main goal, it's been always to offer something to our customers and to this specific, a specific customer as well, obviously, which is to expose a single API that can receive the document already scanned, not only to retrieve the information or to get the information from it, but to classify it, to manage the, the information and actually um, insert, if you will, the information into the backend transform the format if we needed to do it, curate it, for example, if it was um, rotated or some of the elements that we retrieved from the document to be classified and tagged properly. And with that, return a level of confidence. So, so, the, so the customer can, can um, realize if the information that is being retrieved from the document is with a high level of confidence or with a low level of confidence. So every time that we increase that level of confidence, then the customer is feeling much more comfortable in order to move forward with their processes, all right? So this is our main goal. So we, be, we are going to be talking about that we created an API for them and actually an API that we offer to many other customers. So, so you can get the idea about many customers using the same API and then all these cloud native principles are coming together in order to, to make a good offering. So but the first step is to get uh, the image recognition solution, which is via the API that I just mentioned in the previous slide, and which is supported by many Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Services, plus a couple of Google services, all right, that we are about to talk about. And then for this specific customer, we also incorporate an RPA bot, which is actually re reviewing the information that we get from the first step, and then making the decisions either to approve or to reject the loan, all right? So those two things for this specific customer were created to solve the, the problem. But for us, SPS, SPS uh, we created the API and a couple of things inside that API in order to offer it to many other customers with cloud native solutions, all right? So that's, that was the consequence of dealing with this project and creating this API. Okay, actually. Right, so, um... You know, we have a number of services from Oracle for cloud native and DevOps, um, you know, but um, as I talk through these services, the ones that are marked uh, with the check mark are the ones we use, uh, either services or projects that are relevant to this particular use case. But before we go into that, one thing I wanted to point out is that Oracle Cloud is committed to uh, its uh, openness of its cloud platform. Right, so resource manager, for example, is an infrastructure as a service offering uh, that is compatible with open source Terraform. API gateway builds off of open standards like OpenAPI 3.0 and API, um, API blueprints and so on. 
Functions is based off of an open source project called FN project that is led by Oracle. Container Engine is 100% uh, open source based off of uh, Kubernetes, uh, upstream Kubernetes. The streaming service is compatible with open source Apache Kafka. We also leverage the cloud events standard for our event service. You know, you can uh, specify targets uh, using Fluentd agents for the logging service. Grafana for monitoring as well. So the first one we want to take a look at is API management and API gateway. So when it comes to API management, um, you know, API management could be about design of APIs, the deployment of APIs, and then promoting and consuming the APIs, right? The one that's particularly important in this case is the deployment of APIs. Uh, and by deployment of APIs, you know, what I mean is you should be able to receive API calls, you know, as is the case uh, with the application to receive API calls at scale and also receive them and send them to a backend service that could be load balancers, compute, Kubernetes, serverless functions. So serverless functions is what we used in this particular case. Um, and uh, you also want to provide the necessary security and rate limiting for these APIs, uh, API calls too. So uh, Rolanda will tell us a bit more about the use of API Gateway. Yeah, sure. So there are two main things or two relevant things that we can mention about the usage of Oracle um, Cloud Infrastructure API Gateway for this regard, for this specific project, which is the first one is the customer was looking to have a solution where they uh, and need, didn't need to use elements in the on-premise environment, even within the cloud environments that they already had. They wanted to have something like can be used as a service. So, so we needed to to have a, a place to deploy these services, and we realized that Oracle had this API gateway that we can be using in order to expose the APIs that we deliver to to our customers. So that was one thing, and the second thing was that. Uh, we also didn't want it to to manage any servers or any anything related with infrastructure. We just wanted to use the service and expose the API. And it, it happens that this gateway is just like that. It is a, it is a serverless offering from Oracle that we just um, provision it and then just use it. So it was it was very straightforward to do that. And for us. It was fulfilling those two things that the one, the customer didn't want to provision anything on the other end. And second thing that us, SPS, we didn't want to also um, lose time in order to provision anything related with this. So, so those were the two main reasons that we, that we use for that. And, and th there is an extra that we are about to mention, but it is the relationship that it has with the Oracle functions, which is what Akshay is going to mention now. Uh, yeah, Oracle Functions is a serverless platform. Uh, so Functions can integrate with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Services, of course. It's a part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. It can also integrate with platform services and the SaaS applications from Oracle, right? Uh, Functions is based off of an open source project called FN Project that Oracle leads. And, um, you know, being based off of open source, uh, it allows applications to be easily ported over from other cloud and on-premises environments. Um, Rolando, could you tell us a bit more about the use case? Yes, sure. So I just mentioned in the previous slide, the reason uh, or the reasoning about using the API gateway, correct? But then we needed to implement those APIs. So, so we also wanted something to be pretty straightforward to use, to deploy, to manage, and that we had flexibility in terms of the programming language that we were using. And also because of the model that we were looking for with this specific customer, which was to try to uh, charge them by the usage of, of our system, of our API. Then the usage of functions was a very, a very technical um, appealing product for us to use. And the second thing is that the serverless model and the commercial model that functions has is also very good for us because we are just paying for the usage for this. So uh, we, we wanted something very flexible for the programming language again that I just mentioned. Uh, we were looking to use um, Java functions and also Node.js functions. And we just realized how integrated it is with the, the API gateway. Great. Um, so of course we used um, 
the Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, uh, which is also called OKE. Containers, as you know, um, easily package and move apps. Um, and uh, they package just the code and the dependencies without the operating system. So they have advantages of being able to be spun up and spun down quickly. Um, Container Engine for Kubernetes provides orchestration at scale. It's available globally in a number of regions of Oracle Cloud. It's based off of unmodified uh, Kubernetes and it's a managed service, of course. It's integrated with Oracle's registry, uh, its tools for CI, CD, like the developer cloud service and other services too. Um, Rolando could tell us a bit more about how he's using it for this use. Sure. So um, we just mentioned no CI API gateway. That was the first step for us. Then we used functions as well. And for our first phase of delivering this API, it was good enough to have that because we were able to fulfill the customer requirements. We were processing their, their documents and recognizing the, the information within those documents. But we are already working on a, on a phase two for this project and for our offering for many other customers. And then we, we have these alternatives and there is where OKE came into the picture. One is that sometimes customers are looking to deploy this solution in, in, in their own cloud environments. And then normally are using a Kubernetes based uh, cloud environment uh, for deploying applications. So we are able to deploy our solution on top of, of Kubernetes and of course on, on top of OKE. So that is one thing. We just realized that customers are looking to deploy it at their end. Why? Because of the documents are sometimes are very, um, or for security reasons, that's what I'm trying to say and they want to have everything managed at their end, right? So that's, that's one thing. And it is kind of normal to have Kubernetes, Kubernetes as, as the platform where we deploy this, okay? And the second thing is that we are improving our solution and not just offering a single API, but we are actually offering a set of web applications where the customer can keep track about the verification of the file or the document uh, or we can uh, provide to them analytics for the usage of the platform and many other things that can be used through a web UI. And we are actually deploying that web, those web applications on top of Kubernetes. So for our, from our end, it is pretty easy to have what we just mentioned in terms of functions and OCI API gateway plus OKE because we can mix those things together and, and deliver a very good solution for our customers. So, so those are the two things that we are looking for our phase number two, actually. Great. Um, object storage um, is an internet scale storage platform for any type of data. So you can securely store and access uh, any type of data format. Uh, the reference architecture over here just shows an example of how you can use object storage. You upload an image uh, and you use the Oracle functions to get the metadata and store it back into object storage along with the image. Um, Rolando would tell us a bit more about uh, this more complicated use case. Yes, and um, this object of storage was very straightforward for us to incorporate it because we are archiving and we, we are, first we are saving documents and managing them through the object storage. So every time that we receive a document, we are storing it in the object storage. Why? Because for later uh, purposes, for example, the tracking of the document, or if we need to retrieve the document to, for any other type of analysis, then we have it there. And secondly, because we can archive it. And this is just out of the box. We just uh, generate the rules for the arch archiving and the information is being archived um, automatically. So those two reasons were, the, were our reasoning in order to use it. One, just to store every single document that we are using. And secondly, because of the archiving uh, um, capabilities. And it happens that between functions and object storage, it is pretty simple to, to mix them. So technically also it was very straightforward to do it. Okay, so now um, before we go to the demo, we just wanted to highlight how we are connecting the dots and connecting the dots means that we have the use case. We already explained to you the use case. Then we explain a set of Oracle services 
and then we are going to connect what we had as a use case and as a need and how with Oracle technology we are able to fulfill that need. Okay, so we had now all the information in order to um, to deploy our application and fulfill the needs that that we just mentioned. So in the next slide, we are going to to check exactly how how we connect those two two uh, sides of the story. All right, the needs and the um, and the Oracle technology, and because this is the process, the solution of of our process that we after we realized how to use the, um, the different Oracle elements. This was the set of seven steps that we were able to deploy and, and to make them together in order to deliver the solution. So there is one first step to transform the, um, the documents, then how to upload them, then how we classify that document, if it is an ID or if it is a balance or whatever, and then how we curate the, docu the document. Remember that sometimes images are rotated or it has some elements that are, uh, for, for example, low resolution. Then we go to the Google APIs and retrieve all the information and then we tag every single element so we can identify it properly. We also have these machine learnings in order to identify the documents and obviously the recognition about the elements from within the document. So, so these are the seven steps that we were following. And those seven steps are going into these um, uh, elements from Oracle or components from Oracle. So we're going to just highlight two or three of them. So for example, for the documents upload, we are using again, OCI API Gateway, which is the first um, contact from our customers with us in order to receive the, the document, then the object storage where we are storing the information. Uh, also, the classification, curation, and tagging, we are using the Oracle functions. We have a specific Oracle functions that are doing that. And then we have other, other elements that we already mentioned, like Google for the OCR and also for the machine learning. Okay, so now um, we are just going through uh, very fast to review this flow, which is um, um, sequential diagram or sequence diagram, sorry, where we can see how these elements are being played together. So whatever we just mentioned in previous slides about the OCI API gateway, the FM project Oracle functions, uh, Google and the object storage, is, it is right here. So you can see these uh, steps that we are taking and how the information is moving and it is hitting every single uh, uh, product that we just mentioned and how we are using it. And again, every single layer that we are using is 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 um is a serverless uh, offering either from from oracle so so it was pretty pretty easy to to deploy it all right so uh this is the architecture that we used and i mean this is very simple very simple diagram um but we are going to use it oh this is the the, the things that we use so functions getting related with the object storage, as we mentioned, the OCI API gateway presenting those functions into the uh, external world for our third parties and being the first layer that we receive the document. And we are also supported by the Google APIs in order to re retrieve the information from the document and also for the machine learning itself. So these are our environment. This is our ecosystem, if you will. Okay, and then uh, we are going to uh, to the demonstration in order to show you whatever we just mentioned in previous slides. All right. Okay, so let's go for the demo. Okay, so this is the web application that we built here in SPS. This is a work from Plinio Arvizu and Arturo Gonzalez from my team. All, all credits to them because they were the ones who, who created this. I am showcasing it now, but they are the ones who created this from, from scratch. So this is the web application. So this is basically what uh, an end user could be using, but behind the scenes, it is happening what I just explained. So the, the API gateway functions, the Google's APIs, object storage, and, and, all, and, and all what I just mentioned in, in previous slides, all right? So we are going to do two things. We are going to scan, or not to scan, we are going to upload two documents. One, it is a, a high level or a high le confidence level, sorry, document, which is, um, in, in, in a very good shape, if you will, that we are going to evaluate um, the score for that uh, document, which is a telephone line um, balance for Arturo, actually. 
And secondly, we are going to upload a balance both for the internet subscription for our company SPS. And you're, you're gonna get the difference from those two. The first one, which is this, which is a Telmex balance. Um, this is a document that we have the scan for that. And the level of confidence for this is, is very high. Let's just keep in mind something that if you are just thinking, well, this is basically, they are uploading the, the document into the Google API and just retrieving whatever Google is, it is getting back to them. That's not the case because in the normal process, what we have is this rastering process, which goes from left to the right and from up and down. And it is basically taking the elements uh, of the document, as I mentioned, from left to right. So uh, if you can imagine, for example, in line, which is CLL Porfirio Diaz 8, and then su estado de cuenta puede ser, it has nothing to do. The one in the right, the left, sorry, is the address, okay? And the one of the right, it is just a, a paragraph. It is informative things, or it is just informational section of the document, all right? So if we go just left to right and get the information from it, it is not going to be very valuable. It is valuable itself, but it is not relevant for the, for the business process itself. So if we go down and see the result for the API, this is the actual result of the API. We have different sections in the result. The first section is this, which is what we call the quality gate. So as you remember in the sequence diagram that I show in previous slides, we had um, the first step or one of the first steps was to get through the quality gate. And the quality gate is returning the general score for the document. And the general score of the document, we are trying or we are targeting to have it uh, above the 70%. So it is 0.7. If we have a general score above, uh, above 0.7, then it is a document that we trust that the information that, is, that this API is retrieving is, is accurate, okay? If we get and a score below that 0.7, then you can definitely use the information, but the level of confidence is not going to be high. And the second thing that this thing is um, recognizing is the language of the document. In this case, is, it, this is Spanish. So it is, it is getting uh, the information in the right uh, language. In this case, again, in Spanish. And then we have whatever the OCR uh, returned to us, okay? And this is basically all the information that it was able to retrieve. It has now a little order itself. Now we have a structure it in, in such a way that it is not the left to the right and up and down that I just mentioned for the rastering process. We have very clear vision about addresses, names, numbers, and so on. But if you take a look into the lower uh, part of the application, which is the NLP detected labels, now we are not just returning the information from the document, but we are able to classify it. So we can see that this has an, ex, an, an expiration date, which is vigencia, which is the name in, in Spanish. We have nombre, which is name in English, and it's clearly Gonzalez Romero Arturo. We have the address for, for, for Arturo and dirección, it is uh, the name, or that's the word that we use in Spanish, dirección, address in English. and. Now we can get uh, or, or return the information, but in such a way that it is, it is understandable what it is. It, we are not just returning the information and that's it and okay, use it. No, we are able to classify it and give you a level of confidence. In this case, pretty much the name, the expiration date and the address, you have a 100% level of confidence that this is the right information. So you, you can manage this information at your will. So this is, this is a very high level of confidence, actually the, the top level of confidence. But in the other hand, if we upload the other uh, document, which is um, internet subscription balance by this company by the name Axtel, and this is for our own company, Services and Process Solutions, or SPS. Um, this is probably you are thinking, well, this is a good document. It is clear. The image is not that bad. But there are some elements that are not going to allow us to, re to return a high level of confidence. One of those things is that the size of the font, it is, it is kind of small. So as you can see, there are sections of the document that we see that the size of the font, it is not that good. It is actually pretty small. So it's going to be difficult to, to retrieve it. Actually, Google itself is 
uh, or has a, a, a minimum uh, regarding the size of the font. So that's one thing. The second thing is that some of the elements that we can get from the document are elements that can be confused in, in, in what way that probably instead of a zero, we are recognizing it as a no, for example. So there are elements that, that may be complicated to, to recognize. And the third thing is, for example, in this square that we are uh, putting here in the screen, it is um, our long strings of information that in this case represents something related with the IRS. And as you can see, those strings are, first of all, they are kind of long. And in order to identify what they are, it's going to be difficult because as you can see, they have nonsense. They're just pretty much um, a sweet sequence of characters. So if we go below to the quality gate score, then we may see that they, this document in a specific has a very low score, 0. 0.53. So the quality gate says, no, this, is, this probably needs a manual revision. That does not mean that you, you will not be able to use the information. Actually, the information is here in the section of the OCR structured text. We can see the information by itself. And in the NLP detected labels, we, we see that this level of a score is not that high as the previous one. Okay? It, it actually did the whole process. We are able to, to process the whole document and retrieve from, from the APIs the value or the level of confidence and the, and the labels. And also the, uh, we are able to group the information, but this is not so, so high in terms of, of the score. And just to finalize the explanation of the demo, as I was mentioning the rastering process, um, that's something that we use and we actually program in Oracle functions because we know that because of the position of the elements in the document, we are able to recognize what it is and to identify that that is um, that the name is written actually in the name section. The address is written in the address section because of the position in the document. So if we make some some mathematical calculation, we are able to 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 identify and group the information that we get from the documents. But it is basically mathematical calculation because at the end, the rastering process, it is uh, at the same time giving us a, a matrix, a, a dot matrix, so we are able to, to get the information um, doing some mathematical calculations, all right? So this is what we wanted to show you. We show two different documents, two different levels of confidence score. We explain how those different elements are in the mix. And with this, probably you are you are having a different idea of what we are what we are doing and what we are achieving. Okay, so thank you for being with us in the, in the demonstration. Um, this is the list of things that we learn for deploying this. Um, we have benefits for the business and also technical benefits. Uh, the benefits for the business, and we are we are uh, conclu we are giving you these conclusions because. Cloud native is about worrying for uh, the business needs, okay? And we are using the technology in order to deliver a solution for that. So it is very relevant for us to highlight the, the, the benefits for the business and what we learned with this. And the first thing is that we streamline the credit and loans approval and delivery. So it was, it was very clear how this uh, reduced the amount of time that they were using to review the document. So it was, um, maybe a 90% of the time was reused. Also, uh, we are allowing customers to upload information directly. They don't need to go to the branches or have a, an in-person meeting in order to deliver the documents or scan those documents. They can do it through different channels. The institution it is actually now presenting APIs for third parties. So this is also very useful for them. So now they are offering these services for third parties, so now they can have external organization using their platform in order to, to review documents and, and, and be part of this chain of activities. Um, and also for, the, in terms of manual intervention, we reduce that because now we don't have these large or very large teams um, reviewing those documents. And for the technical side of the house, we streamline the deployment, obviously. Uh, it is very easy to deploy this. Um, we can actually do it uh, at, the, at the customer infrastructure if they want that. Uh, we are also having constant changes and we have the ability with Cloud Native in order to incorporate those changes. And also in terms of scalability, 
ECD, we have this, uh, this way to, to scale and pretty easily with, with all these Oracle Cloud infrastructure components. So, so this is kind of our summary. Hopefully you found that interesting and we are just finalizing sharing with you our contacts uh, again, our uh, social network contact. So you can uh, check out the GitHub repositories, the Katacoda, Katacoda scenarios from Rolando. And also, uh, you know, we have some product web pages for Oracle cloud infrastructure if you're so interested in giving a look or even trying the cloud. So uh, please feel free to reach us on Twitter on, and LinkedIn. Our uh, handles are provided there. We're now ready to take any questions you may have.